We will start by calculating the total pressure loss across a horizontal orifice plate. An orifice plate is simply a plate with a hole in it put inside a pipe. The pipe has cross-sectional area A1 and inlet speed V1. We're going to consider three sections, the inlet, section 1, this section 2, just downstream of the orifice, and section 3, once the flow is fully developed again. We will assume that the flow does not lose any mechanical energy between section 1 and section 2. The streamlines therefore look like this. The speed of the jet in section 2 in the middle is V2, but the jet cross section is A2. In section 2, we've chosen that section such that there's no streamline curvature, which means that the static pressure is uniform in the radial direction. On either side of the jet, there are recirculation zones, and because the flow is circulating, we can safely assume that the pressure at the two points I've circled is roughly the same. And putting all of that together means that the pressure measured here at the edge of the pipe is the same as the pressure in the jet. After the jet, there is a great deal of turbulent mixing and a great loss of mechanical energy until we reach fully developed pipe flow at 3, at which point the speed, once again, is V1 and we also measure the pressure upstream of the orifice, P1. Right, now for the analysis. If we assume that there are no viscous losses between section 1 and section 2, we can apply Bernoulli's equation between section 1 and this point on section 2, and from that we get an expression for the difference between pressure 1 and pressure 2. Now, if we knew A2 and A1, we could calculate V2 over V1 from conservation of mass. As long as the density is uniform, which it is, A2 V2 is equal to A1 V1. And substituting that into our expression for P1 minus P2, we obtain an expression in terms of A1 over A2, and we note that this term here is a constant. It actually depends on the exact shape of the orifice. Now in most situations we won't know A1 over A2, however this is a constant that can be measured experimentally, and so to calibrate our orifice plate, we conduct a set of experiments in which we set V1 and then measure P1 minus P2. And then we plot P1 minus P2 against a half row V1 squared. Once we've calibrated the orifice plate, we can then measure P1 minus P2 in order to work out what V1 is going through the pipe. But we haven't yet worked out what the total pressure drop is across the orifice plate. For that, we need to consider the flow between 2 and 3. Remember that inside this control volume, there's a lot of turbulent mixing, therefore a loss of mechanical energy, and we cannot use Bernoulli's equation. However, we can apply the steady flow momentum equation. This is that the force on the left-hand side of the control volume, which is A3P2, minus the force on the right-hand side of the control volume, which is A3P3, is equal to the rate of change of momentum across the control volume, which is the mass flow rate m dot times v3, that is the speed at section 3, minus the mass flow rate times v2. And it's worth noting that we have ignored the wall shear stress. If we wanted to include this, we would need an extra term. A common mistake is using a2 instead of a3 here, but we need to use a3 because we're considering the force over this whole surface of the control volume, and that has cross-sectional area A3, not just cross-sectional area A2, which is that of the jet. And rearranging and using the fact that m dot is equal to rho AV at any station, we obtain an expression for P2 minus P3. Now, by conservation of mass, V3 is equal to V1, so we obtain an expression for the total static pressure drop, and then we get the stagnation pressure drop, because V3 is equal to V1. And this stagnation pressure drop is the total pressure drop, because the orifice is horizontal. There's no change in H. And it can be expressed as a half row V1 squared times K, where the loss coefficient K is a function of the orifice diameter and shape. For flows at high Reynolds number, K is a constant. It no longer depends on the Reynolds number. And K is tabulated or plotted in books and here's an example of such a plot.